Hey folks, have you been thinking about the COVID-15 and how it's maybe affected you or family members and realizing that you're eating way more junk food and you're not quite sure why that's happening? Well, I am so excited because I have a guest today who's going to talk to us about emotional eating and, and here's like a real secret for you. We're all emotional eaters, but uh, you know, just she's going to share some insights for us to help us reclaim how we eat, how we nourish our body so that we can feel better, do better and get through this crazy time without so much stress and overwhelm. So my guest today is my good friend and colleague, Trisha Nelson. And she is an amazing inspiration. She lost 50 pounds by identifying and healing the underlying cause of her emotional eating. She spent over 30 years researching the hidden causes of addictive personality. She's an emotional eating expert and the author of the number one best-selling book, Heal Your Hunger, Seven Simple Steps to End Emotional Eating Now. And uh, she's also the host of the popular podcast, Heal Your Hunger Show. And she's a big public speaker. She speaks for a lot of the, the big news outlets, NBC, CBS, Fox, Discovery Health, all of that. So she's going to share some wisdom with us so we can all do better and be healthier. Trisha, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things you and I have talked about this a couple of times, people are really very overwhelmed right now because they're stuck in this, you know, having to be at home, not going out, and they're not maybe not identifying the fact that this is turning them into if they're, well, everybody's an emotional eater, but if there's someone who identifies as an emotional eater, it's a little bit harder because they're getting stuck in it. And then for those who never thought of themselves that way, they're maybe spending too much time opening and closing that refrigerator door. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So can you help us identify, like, what are some of the hallmarks of emotional eating? Totally. Um, you know, I think it is kind of funny right now, funny or not funny, that people who never would consider themselves an emotional eater or even really stop to even think what that means all of a sudden, you know, it's in their face and they're like, oh my God, I am totally eating when I don't need to eat. I'm not hungry. Yeah. I'm, you know, just, I just want a little escape. So, um, so um, I have identified three primary emotions that really drive emotional eating. And, um, and this is certainly was my experience as a total emotional eater and food addict. Um, but, but I find that it drives most, it, it really addictive habits in general, but definitely for emotional eaters, you know, we think about what food does to us because, you know, it makes us fat, you know, we can't fit into our pants, you know, we get inflammation, um, you know, it causes depression, anxiety, all the kinds of things, but we don't think what food is doing for us, mm. you know, and it obviously we're using it for some emotional reason. And so uh, I've identified in my research, three primary emotions. And so what food does for us is it, I, I describe this by something I call the PEP formula, PEP. -E so the first mm -hmm. P stands for painkiller. So we use food as a painkiller to kill mm -hmm. emotional pain. You know, if we are in a relationship that's not satisfying, if we're in a job that's dead end, or, you know, we're caretaking our parents and that's, you know, got its challenges or a sick child, whatever. There's a lot of pain to go around in this world right now. And so mm -hmm. we just, you know, we feel it. It's hard as emotional eaters. We feel it more than your average person. I find that overeaters are, are oversensitive, you know, and so we feel everything deeply. And so uh, we use food as a painkiller. So pain is the first thing that really drives a person's like compulsion and all that refrigerator opening and closing. Um, the E stands for escape. And certainly right now in this mm -hmm. day and age, with COVID and all the fears that we have around walking out our door and possibly getting sick and dying, you know, we want to escape that reality. It's uncomfortable. Um, it's painful. It's, it's just, it's not fun. So we want to check out and that's why we're turning to food because, you know, carbs and sugar help us check out. Like they just totally numb us out. And, you know, my experience is anybody who struggles chronically with food and weight um, you know, has this aversion to uncomfortable feelings. They want to check out of anything that's unpleasant. You know, mm -hmm. we like the happy, happy high notes, 
but you know, anything below that is a little like just too squishy for us. So, so we like to escape. And so, and this is true for me. I get my ice cream, my chips, my cookies, my Hershey's kisses sit in front of the TV, my favorite, favorite bingeable show. And just, it's just like, you know, just shutting the world out. So, so worry, fear, these are some of the feelings that drive, you know, our need for escape. Um, and the third P, you know, the third, le third letter in the PEP formula is another P and it stands for punishment. And, mm. you know, we don't think of this because food seems like a reward. So often we use it as a reward. We've had a hard, you know, uh, work week. We're going to reward ourselves. You know, we've been through a lot, you know, times have been hard. We're just going to, you know, reward ourselves with food. And that is true on the front end. But if you're an emotional eater, which means you tend to go overboard at times, you know, um, Louis C.K. Um, is a, you know, famous comedian. He's, he said, he's like, you're not done with the dinner, you know, when your plate, you know, when you're, there's nothing on your plate, you're done with dinner when you hate yourself, <laughs> you know, or whatever. He oh man, like yeah. You know, it's like you're stuffed, you've gone way overboard, you might even have some crumbs down your sweater, you know, because you've been sitting in front of the TV, just totally checked out you know, that's painful. And, you know, if your stomach hurts, if you are hating yourself or being, you know, all the self-recriminating thoughts, why did I do that? What's wrong with me? You know, I shouldn't have eaten that last bowl of ice cream or that last bowl of cereal. You know, I, you know, I, I have to go buy some more. So my family doesn't know I just devoured the whole cake, you know, and so yeah. all these different things, um, you know, we laugh about it. And at the same time, you know, the next day, I mean, we're hurting, we're hurting, yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we're bloated, you know, oftentimes we cancel our plans with people, um, in summertime, we don't want to put a bathing suit on, you know, we'll, we'll avoid the beach, um, and if you think about it, that's not so much a, a reward, that is punishment, that's what we're doing to ourselves, so it really begs the question, why would we do that to us? Why would we are treat our bodies, our body temple, the thing that's with us and, and working for us, even when we don't ask it to, why would we put it through such abuse? And my experience is guilt is a big driver of emotional mm -hmm. eating. Not that we're conscious of it. You know, again, we're thinking, I'm just going to reward myself, but really there are subconscious guilt, you know, feelings of guilt that do drive emotional eaters, you know, eating behavior. And, you know, part of this is because we are so sensitive, you know, we're very sensitive. We're also uh, self-conscious. Uh, we, we don't, you know, have a strong sense of ourselves a lot of times. So we're insecure at other people. We're people pleasers. We, we you know, we tend to play, uh, conversations back in our heads, like, what'd she mean by that? Or, you know, why did they say that or whatever? So it's like, we're, we, we've got, we're burdened. We're burdened with these things that other people just, eh, just rolls off their shoulder. But uh, well, for us, we, we hold the, on well, to the it. Other, the other thing that occurs to me based on what you're saying is, you know, when we think about it, if we're lucky, we get to eat three times a day. And so we're constantly faced with having to make those choices. And so I can see how that checking out philosophy also allows you to coast through, but you're continually being asked to check in with yourself and to evaluate how you're feeling and what you're doing so that you don't have an entire bag of chips for dinner or, you know, decide to go for the fast food or, you know, and, and some of those things are addictive in nature, which doesn't help. But there's, there's that whole emotional component of multiple times a day, you are asked to look at where you are and how you're feeling. Yeah. And the thing is, we typically don't connect our emotions with our cravings. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, I just want chocolate, you know, but we do have to get conscious about what's really going on. And I do find that, you know, I, I call it three meal magic, three meals a day with nothing in between. This oh, does, go. yeah, this helps a person, first of all, cut out the snacky foods because that's where most of our weight gain is. It's from the chips, it's from the cookies, it's from, you know, the, the bread and butter. I mean, it's, it's anything that's in between meals is typically not a healthy food. And so if you just stick to three meals, even if, you know, the meals are too big, you're still gonna, you know, start, you know, headed in the right, oops, head in the right direction of being able to be, you know, cleaner around your food. But what it also does is enable you to start to recognize what those emotions are if you do check in. Because when we are snacking throughout the day, we're numb. We're numbed out, you know, and people will say to me, who are overweight or obese or really, you know, some people will say, Oh, I'm not an emotional eater. 
Um, you know, but the thing is, that's because food's doing its job. Like they don't know they have emotions because they're checked out all the time. Such a good point, you know, because part of the challenge is when we think of food, we, we tend to have such a childlike relationship with our food. And we think of it merely as a, as a means of feeding our body. But we forget that we are whole beings, holistic. There's all aspects of us. And what we eat is actually nourishing every cell in our body, driving our neurotransmitters, all of that. That's such a good point. Yeah, no question. So, so yeah, it's really, it does take dropping on in. It does take slowing down, getting still and quiet. And the problem is overeaters are also overdoers. So we like to be on the go all the time. And we like to be busy, busy, busy. And part of this, or a big part of this, is because we don't want to feel. You know, this yeah. strong aversion to feeling our feelings is really what drives the train for emotional eaters, you know, and again, it's not a conscious thing, but if you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, most emotional eaters have trauma in, they, in their past. They have something that happened, not all the time, but oftentimes um, there's some kind of dysfunction in their childhood, alcoholism, mental illness, addiction of some kind, you know, and, and so there, you know, I know for myself, I made a decision at a very young age that I just wasn't going to feel like, and again, not a conscious decision. I don't remember when I made that decision, but I do remember painful things happening that I decided this is, you know, I didn't have tools to deal with it. So I just shut down. It's like, I'm not going to feel this. And so it becomes a habitual thing throughout our lives where we're just like, if it gets too uncomfortable, you know, I'm going to get my padding. I'm going to get some extra food around me and extra fat around me because then I'm not going to be, you know, I'm going to be protected and not feel as much. So there's a lot going on underneath the surface. There's no question about it. And the funny thing is, Mira, is I used to just think I liked food. It's like my sister came home one day and she's like, I'm an emotional eater. She's the one who I have her to blame for this whole thing. <laughs> um, she's like, I'm an emotional eater. And, and I thought to myself, that's really stupid. Like, I just like food. But the seed was planted. Like, after she said that, you know, and this may happen for anybody watching this right now. After, you know, your consciousness is kind of, um, you know, peaked or, or tuned in to this idea of the connections between your eating and your cravings and, and your emotions, um, you know, you're going to start noticing, gee, you know, why is it that every time I have to make this uncomfortable phone call, I'm going to the kitchen? You know, why is it that instead of doing my taxes, you know, I'm baking all of a sudden, you know? And it's you know, like, and that's such a point because right now with this whole COVID thing, like I'm seeing all these people on this whole sourdough baking trend, you know, and they're selling out of flour at the grocery store. Like I, and so in other words, it's a pretty common theme, I guess, is what I'm hearing that when there is some sort of chaos, whether it's in your personal life or what's going on in the world around you, a flood, a fire, a, a pandemic, anything that, that, that sort of behavior tends to go up because people are trying to essentially, um, they're seeking comfort but they're yeah. doing it through food instead of through other healthier you and know. it yeah it makes sense i mean bread you know you know serotonin hit you know all this it just makes us feel good and food is the most accessible thing it's totally socially acceptable to be baking bread you know and in you know cookies and cake and all this kind of thing so we don't think about it and yet for those who are really struggling with emotional eating you know those who have a chronic you know, yo-yoing in their weight, um, you know, because they're dieting and busting out of their diet and going back on a diet, you know, for those people, it is really painful, you know, and this is where, this is what drives the work that I do with Heal Your Hunger is that, you know, I know the darkness of binging, you know, I know the darkness of like having your head like filled with food thoughts 24 seven, what am I going to eat next? And is my favorite food available? Or did I eat it? Or, you know, did someone else eat it? God forbid, you know, and it's like, like all this obsession and it takes us out of our present. You know, we can, we can't really be present with our family when we're thinking about food or wishing sure. the kids would go to bed so I can sit down finally and, and have my binge. I mean, it's a lot of painful you know, consequences of being an emotional eater, um, not to mention the waking and all that, you know, the, the suffering and the humiliation. The side effects. 
Yeah. Yeah. So much so. So what is like, if you had one tip for someone who's maybe all of a sudden hearing you and going, maybe I am an emotional eater. Like what is one thing that people can do to begin to build that awareness? And then obviously my recommendation is buy your book. Um, but to then, you know, move forward and begin to make those healthy changes. Yeah. I mean, definitely my book is a great place for people to start. I also have a quiz where people, you know, my experience, and I love how you said at the beginning, everybody's an emotional eater. Cause that's true. Like I think God made us to have some kind of emotional connection to food. So we'd subsist as a species, right? So, um, we have it just some people go way too far with it and have mm. major consequences. And that was me. And I have a, um, you know, I really see it as a spectrum on the low side of the spectrum is just general emotional eating and the high end of the spectrum is food addiction. So I have a quiz that can show somebody where they are on that spectrum. And if they go to healyourhunger.com, it's a free quiz. It's on my website, um, but they'll get a personalized score as to where they are on that spectrum. And then what they, you know, action wow. steps they can take. But I would say um, the very first thing somebody can do, um, and this may sound weird during COVID times, but um, is really um, uh, slow down, you know, because uh, stress is certainly a big driver of emotional eating. But the, the most intentional way you can slow down is start your day with some kind of spiritual practice or meditation practice, something that can help you get still and quiet and centered. I call it putting money in your spiritual bank account because, you know, through the day when stress does pile up, you know, and you know, we tend to reach for food to re-energize us, you know, to kind of uh, deal with the stress so we can go on with our day. But if you do take a time out first time, first thing in the morning, just start your day sort of energizing yourself and putting money in that spiritual bank account, spiritual readings, meditation, prayer, going for a walk. You know, these things can really, and you know, there's things, apps you can get that ha you have guided meditations. Anything just helps you like just really get grounded, get grounded and still and quiet. Like we have to start really embarking on a relationship with ourselves and with our emotions and realize it's not so scary in there. You know, feelings are like a boogeyman to us. We're like running as far as, as we can and fast as we can away from them. But if we, like everybody has emotions, if we just stop and face them, they do pass. You know, they're not mm -hmm. as bad and terrible as we assume they're going to be. You know, and even if you just feel the urge all of a sudden to eat some chocolate, just check in, do a little pep test. Is it, you know, is it pain? Some Something painful? Is it fear? Is it some feeling of guilt or remorse? Like what's going on? And just that little pause, that little just just being a little bit quiet. Like that relationship that we need to nurture, you know, with ourselves. And then of course, just to reiterate the three meal magic, the three meals with nothing in between, just that alone oh, yeah. is, is gonna cut down on so many of the snacky, carby, you know, fatty foods that we like to snack on. So I, those are some I good actually, places. Yeah, I love the idea of three meal magic because, you know, as the ingredient guru, the work that I do looks at all the stupid stuff that they do to our food. And one of the things that drives me crazy is food producers have essentially turned us into a nation of snackers because their goal is, you know, they're, they're in the business of making money. They do it through food. The only way to make more money is to sell more food. And so if people are satiated and not eating more, well, convince them to have a snack. And then they're, you know, having yeah. they all of a sudden graze their way through the day, get to the end of the day, and there's nothing left for a real meal to nourish their bodies. And then they just sort of start that roller coaster. Yeah, people would be amazed. If people don't think they're an emotional eater, I always say, you know, just eat three meals and don't snack. And that alone is going to wake people up to how much they are having that urge to nibble and snack when they don't need to, they've eaten a good, healthy lunch. Like what's up with this? I have to eat something at two or three in the afternoon. Like that's just an emotional thing. It's like, we're just, first of all, it's habitual. Of course, we're just used yeah. to that. Um, you know, and we have a dip in energy in the afternoon. And so, but the, the thing is, it's going to help people start cluing into how emotional their eating and their cravings really are. And that's such a great point. Well, Tricia, thank you so much for sharing. This has been amazing. Tons of information. Cannot wait to share.
folks. I'll put the links down below so that you can check those out. Don't forget to also click that subscribe and hit that bell so that you'll know when the next video comes up. Thanks for joining us and we'll be back with more later. Trisha, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, take care. You too.